Hello, Ellie here from Thankful Flow Yoga. Thank you so much for joining me for another YouTube practice. Today we are doing a full body deep and stretchy flow. Um, so this will be suitable for all levels. There will be options to come deeper into the stretches and there'll be options to take it a little bit more gently as well and um, depending on what you need today and what you, where you're at in your practice. Um, so I would definitely recommend having, as always, blocks um, and probably a strap today would be quite helpful. So either a yoga strap or you could just use a dressing gown tie or equivalent. So we're gonna start the class by just coming into a comfortable seated position and bring one hand to the belly, one hand to the chest, close down the eyes or take a steady gaze. Start to relax all the muscles in your face. Relax the neck, the shoulders. Notice the parts of the body where your hands are connected to the belly and the chest. And see if you can feel those areas moving as you breathe. Starting to let go of anything that came before this practice. Anything that you think might be coming afterwards. And just dropping into the present moment. Opening the eyes back up when you're ready. Releasing the hands. And we'll inhale and sweep both arms up to the sky, lifting the ribs away from the hips. Bend your right arm, send the right hand down your back. And this left hand can come to the right elbow. So finding this opening here, but notice if your ribs are flaring out at all here. And if they are, just try and draw them in slightly. Draw the belly button in towards the spine as well. Now option to release this left hand and you can start to roll the left shoulder forwards and then bring the hands to meet behind the back. You could always use a strap here as well so you could have each hand on the strap and the strap could create more space for you to come into this position. So these are our Gomukhasana arms. Breathing here. Keeping those sitting bones sinking into the earth, connected to the ground. And release, well done. Take a shoulder roll. Coming on to the other side, inhale, sweep both arms up to the sky, bend the left arm this time, right hand's finding the left elbow, so you could be working here, or you can float the right arm around, rolling that right shoulder, so we're internally rotating with the right shoulder, and then hands, fingers are finding each other behind the back. But no worries if that's not for you. If that's not what your body's doing today, that's okay. Finding the breath. And relaxing the face. Relaxing the muscles in the face as best you can. Notice if you're holding the breath at all in any of these stretches, just observing that. We want to try and keep that prana, that life force energy flowing. Well done, and release the arms down. Take another couple of shoulder rolls. And then we're gonna bring the legs out in front now. So remembering if you are someone who needs kind of blocks and props under your hips, then by all means taking that support. 
So legs are lengthened, we're gonna take this right leg and hook it over the left leg, but we're completely hooking it over, so working towards the knees being stacked here. So it's a little bit different to when we're doing our pigeon pose. We're working towards knees being stacked. So really nice stretch into this right hip space. So inhaling here with a lengthened spine. Exhale, start to fold forwards, keeping the spine long. So this is a really strong, strong place to be for a lot of us. So just remembering that that alignment with the spine is really important. So it's better to stay higher up and keep the spine long, keep the space across the chest then to come further into the fold, but, but be rounding the spine. So coming to a place that feels right for you. And as you breathe on the inhale, maybe you can find a little bit of space, a gentle lift in the body. And as you exhale, relaxing into your fold as much as you can. One more breath here on this side. And on the inhale, walk the hands in, come back to center. Well done. Take your left hand to your right leg and find a little twist here. So my right hand's coming out behind, lifting on the inhale and twisting on the exhale, following with your gaze over the right shoulder. And releasing, coming back to centre, unravel that right leg, take a little shake out through the legs if you need to, and we'll take it onto the other side. So hook your left leg over the right, working towards the knees being stacked, but we're keeping this right leg lengthened, foot flexed. Inhale, reach the crown of your head to the ceiling. Exhale, folding forwards, leading with the chest bone. So you'll probably find that even a small range of movement here, a small fold, will you'll be able to most likely feel that deep stretch into the body without needing, without rounding the spine or forcing anything. If anything feels too much, just easing off at any time. On the inhales, maybe finding a little length through the spine. And on the exhale, seeing if you can surrender into your fold as much as you can. Inhale, start to walk the hands back in, coming back up to center, finding our twist now. So right hand is coming to the outside of the left thigh or knee and left hand's coming out behind, twisting to the left, following with your gaze, lengthening the spine, sending your awareness into the body, taking a scan of the body, noticing, how do I feel today? What is alive for me today? And slowly release, coming back to center. Unravel the legs, take a little shake out. And then move into your all fours position, tabletop position. Shoulders above the wrists, hips above the knees. And we're gonna start to take some circular cat and cow movements. So what I mean by this is moving around. So we are coming through this rounded spine position, but we're also moving the hips around, dropping the belly down. So instead of our traditional cat and cow, we're taking a kind of circular movements with the body. So don't worry too much about how this looks or if you're thinking, am I doing this right? 
just moving the body in a way that feels good where you're starting to move the spine mobilize the spine if you want to take traditional cat and cow here of course you can stay with your breath Let's try and make these movements quite exaggerated if you can Nice, and coming back to centre, reach the right leg out behind, tuck your toes under, find an opening into the back of that right leg, and start to press the toes into the mat, maybe you can gently shift back and forth, but keep the tummy drawing in here, so notice if you're wanting to sink into the lower back at all here, and really find that engagement. Pressing the fingers into the ground. And bring the right leg back in, come on to the left side. So tuck the left toes under, start to find that stretch into the back of the left leg now. Well done, bring that left leg back in and we'll tuck the toes under. Exhale, press the mat away with your hands, send the hips to the sky, downward facing dog. Press the mat away with your hands. Remember that you can keep the legs a little bit bent and that's absolutely fine. The most important thing is the spine. So it's actually better to be bending the legs in your downward dog, but have the spine nice and long, rather than be really trying to get the legs straight, but compromising with that length through the spine. So here we're gonna inhale, and I want you to actually lift your heels away from the mat, so coming up on the toes, and then we're gonna twist. So uh, heels are twisting to the right, bend through the legs, so finding this deep stretch here into the left side of the body. Inhale, come back through center. Now shift your heels over to the left. Bend the legs, find that stretch through the right side body. Breathing into that space. And come back to your downward facing dog. You can drop the heels down. Inhale, send your gaze between the hands and jump or step the feet through to the outside of the hands, finding your malasana. So I'm gonna turn to face you here. So again, taking a block, taking any support that you need in your malasana. So you're either just gonna be working here, really reaching the crown of the head up to the ceiling, lifting up from the roots, so we're engaging Mula Bandha here, we're engaging the pelvic floor muscles, the muscles at the seat of the pelvis, we're opening into the hips. Now option here is to start to draw that right knee inward, so we're internally rotating with that right hip, can you touch it down to the ground, bring it back. Other side, can you drop that left knee down to the ground, bring it back. If you're quite tight through the knees and the ankles, I recommend just staying in your, in your Melasna squat here and missing out this add-on, okay? So really, really honoring what feels right for you. So option to take that one more time on each side. So dropping that right knee down, opening back up. So lots of hip mobility here. Left knee comes down, open it back up to Melasna. And now we're gonna press the feet into the ground and lift up to standing, finding your Tadasana Mountain Pose, well done. <laughs> so in your Tadasana Mountain Pose at the top of the mat, grounding through the feet. Inhale, reach your fingertips up to the sky, lift the ribs away from the hips. Exhale, forward fold, bend the legs as much as you need to. Inhale, lift your chest, lengthen the spine, Ardha Uttanasana. 
Exhale, hands come down to the mat, step or jump the feet back, whatever you're feeling for. And then moving through your version of Chaturanga, so you're more than welcome to inhale and come through into Cobra, or you're gonna take your upward facing dog. And then on the exhale, lifting the hips to the sky, finding your downward facing dog. Press the mat away with your hands. Reconnecting with your breath. Inhale, we're gonna sweep this right foot through between the hands and then keeping the left hand grounded, inhale, reach the right fingertips up to the sky. Easy twist. Now from here, keeping the right fingertips reaching up, see if you can drop down that back left knee, so taking it into this twist but in the low lunge. Now if this is feeling really strong for you, I recommend taking a block and having your left hand on a block here to support you. So either staying here with the twist or your next add-on, getting deep and stretchy today, is to bend in that back leg and maybe your right hand takes the left foot. I know I've put this in some of my other practices, it's such a good stretch for the hip flexor, the quads, but it is very, very deep and intense stretch. So again, always listen to your body. See what feels right to you on the day that you're doing the flow. So you might be doing this stretch one day, but on another day it might not be for you and that is okay, honoring that. Now releasing that back leg with control. We're gonna float this right hand over, so uh, the hands are framing that right foot. And now tuck your left toes under, power up through the back leg, ground the hands into the mat, lift your right foot away, but bending the right leg, and then draw your knee to the outside of your right wrist, find your pigeon pose. So again, you could be using blocks or props to fill in any space here that you've got between your hips and the mat. You could use a bolster, cushions, or you can always take a lying pigeon option instead. So your lying pigeon would still be with the right leg hooked, but you'd be taking it here. Okay, so just taking what feels right to you. So if you're in your king pigeon, you're gonna start to walk the hands down in front, taking a fold. You can close the eyes here if that feels good too. And trying to find comfort within any discomfort here. Connecting to a sense of surrender, a sense of ease. Inhale, walk the hands back in. And you're either going to continue working here with your pigeon so you're welcome to come back down into the fold if you wish to, or your next option is we're bending the left leg in. And if it's in your practice, you're either gonna work towards a mermaid variation, so you could be hooking the left foot into the crease, where the, the crease of your left arm, or you could be taking your mermaid here. If you have your reverse grip, you're more than welcome to take that. But as always, just listening to your body. You can ease off at any time. Take a child's pose at any time. And slowly releasing from mermaid. Bring the hands down to the mat. 
tuck your back foot under, ground through the hands, activate through the left leg, lift that right leg back, come back to a high plank. And we'll take our chaturanga, so inhaling into an upward facing dog or cobra. And exhaling back to a downward facing dog. Inhale, sweep the left foot through between the hands, reach the right fingertips up to the sky, easy twist. Seeing if you can follow with your gaze. Now dropping the back knee down, see if you can stay in the twist here. So you can either be continuing to work here or you're bending in the right foot, taking the left hand to the right foot stretching here. Nice deep breaths. And now releasing that back leg with control. Float the hands around to frame the front foot. Activate through your back right leg. And we're gonna bring the left knee to the outside of the left wrist now for our pigeon on the left side. So just remembering using blocks or props to support you taking a lying pigeon instead if you need to. So making sure that our hips are nice and square here. And then we're gonna exhale, fold forwards, resting the head, closing the eyes if that feels good too. Perhaps noticing how your pigeon feels on this side. Often the two sides can feel quite different. That's okay. And either staying in the fold in the in your pigeon or if you're working towards mermaid or you're coming into your mermaid variation you're going to lift away from the fold bend in that back leg and you can either work with bringing the foot to the crease or taking your full mermaid and interlacing the hands but just being mindful here this is a really kind of deep stretch into the body so always coming to the place before your limit. Stepping away from our, what our ego often tells us to do, which is to always do the hardest version <laughs> or do what everyone else is doing or what you think everyone else is doing. And actually we all can just tune into ourselves and our inner knowing of what is right for us. And gently releasing that back leg down, grounding the hands into the mat, tuck the back toes under, power through that right leg, step it back to plank and chaturanga, inhaling upward facing dog or cobra, or you can just take a child's pose here if you wish to. And we'll exhale back to downward facing dog, lifting those hips to the sky, Inhale, send the gaze between the hands, step the feet in, lift the chest, lengthen the spine, find a halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. 
inhale reach the fingertips up to the sky lift your ribs away from your hips exhale float the hands through to heart center and we'll take a big step out find your wide leg position toes are pointing forwards hands to hips inhale here lift your ribs away from your hips exhale hinge from the hips forward fold prasarita padottanasana bringing the hands down if that's in your practice no worries if it's not And then see if you can walk the hands over to the left side. And again, you could be using blocks here to support you, okay? So you could use a block to help you stay higher up and move over. Or maybe the hands are able to wrap round that left leg. So taking a stretch down low here. Staying up higher if you need to. And walking over to the right side now, same again here. So we're feeling this stretch into the left side body through the backs of the legs, maybe in the lower back. Just notice where you can feel it for you, bringing your awareness back into the body. Coming back to center, hands come back to the hips. Inhale, slowly lift the chest, keep the spine long. Making your way back up to neutral. We'll walk the feet in together. You can take a little shake through the legs if you need to. And then just bending this right foot in, we're gonna take our hand to the right foot. Squeezing the thighs in together, finding this stretch into the right quad. And then option with this left arm to take your chin mudra, so index finger meets the thumb. Finding a drishti, gazing point out in front, and of course use the wall if you need to. Relax the face. Well done, release that right foot down and come on to the other side so left leg bends in left hand comes to left foot seeing if you can find your chin mudra index finger meeting the thumb on the right side stretching into the quad the hip flexor And releasing that left leg. Take a little shake out. And we'll just bring the hands out in front, come up on the toes, and slowly start to bend through the legs. Working with a little bit of balance. Slowly lowering down to the mat. And then bring the hips down back to our comfortable seated position when you're ready. So as always, if you have longer, I definitely recommend taking a longer meditation or shavasana here. I hope you enjoyed that deep and stretchy practice. It would be a really good complement to if you're kind of training or doing other sports or working out in the gym. Um, so yeah, please do comment back to me, subscribe to this channel, it's completely free um, to see more flows. I've got lots more coming up towards the end of the year. Um, so yeah, link below to the other things that I offer. Um, online retreats and my online membership with lots of kind of more juicy longer practices um, and things on there but yeah I can't wait to see you again very soon take care bye bye